Hi, this is Eric for Ojoy. In the next few videos, we're going to take a close look at working with Octane materials in Octane for Maya. So in this video, we're just going to do a quick overview of how the materials work, uh, where to find their various settings, and over the course of the next few videos, we'll take a deeper look into each different type of material. So when you're working with Octane for Maya, there's several different places you can find the materials. You can go up to the Octane menu here at the top, and you'll find a whole submenu devoted to the different types of Octane materials. So if you choose one of these, it will add the material to your scene. If you have an object selected and you choose one of these, it will apply that material to the selected object. Likewise, if you go to the Octane render shelf, you'll see that these icons over here are the different types of materials. So you can click on one of these to add it to the scene. And of course, you can also go into a Hypershade so I'll choose Windows Rendering Editor's Hypershade to bring up Hypershade. And you'll see that here are existing materials in the scene already. And if we take a look over here at the Create menu, you'll see that there is an Octane section. And if I click on Octane Materials, we get a view of just the materials that are available. And there's a few new ones that have been added in Octane 308 for Maya. The different types of materials include diffuse, glossy, metallic, mix, orbix, portal, specular, and tune. So just to give you a quick overview of how these materials work, the diffuse material is best for rough surfaces like concrete or stone, anything that doesn't have a strong specular highlight. The glossy material is good for opaque, shiny surfaces like plastic or rubber or painted metal. The metallic material, of course, is great for metals and has a photorealistic index of refraction, uh, as well as anisotropic properties. The mixed material allows you to combine any two octane materials together, kind of in a layered fashion, including other mixed materials. The Orbix material gives you access to the octane standalone node graph editor when working with materials. The portal material is a special material used for uh, lighting. So if you have light coming in through a window into like a room or something like that, this material could be used to optimize the uh, rendering of the light coming through the window. So it's used in very specific circumstances. The specular material is for uh, transparent surfaces such as glass or transparent plastic, also translucent surfaces that uh, have subsurface scattering uh, properties to them. And then the tune material is a special material that creates a cartoon or illustrated look to the surface that you apply it to. So let's create a diffuse material. So I'll just click on this button and we have a diffuse material. Uh, of course, most of the work that we're going to be doing will be with this node right here. This is the shading group node that uh, connects the material to the surface. For the most part, we don't really have to worry about working with the shading group node uh, when, when working with octane material. So we can kind of ignore it as long as it's connected to the material. Uh, just like with all Maya nodes, we have this option here for expanding the uh, connections by clicking on these little slots right here. So we'll get into details about how to use these various different settings in the video on diffuse materials. The main thing I want to point out at the moment, though, is that when you're working with Octane materials, you don't want to use the Maya nodes. So you won't be using the 2D or 3D textures that are part of the standard Maya toolkit. So we can ignore those. Everything you need to worry about is contained within the Octane section. So of course we have the materials. We have a group of utility nodes. We have our textures, which are broken into subcategories. So uh, these textures uh, include things like uh, the RGB spectrum, which is a color texture, um, tune ramp textures. We also have image textures, procedurals, such as noises and fractals. And then we have geometrically based textures, such as the dirt or ambient occlusion texture, fall off, uh, polygon side, and so on. And then for mapping, um, if you're creating a triplanar mapping or a UV mapping, or if you're baking the lighting into a texture. And we have various operators uh, such as add and multiply, clamp and invert, and so on. When you're mapping a texture to a material, you want to use the transform and projection nodes that are found right here, not the Maya 2D or 3D projection nodes. You don't need to worry about those. 
Instead, you can worry about transform and projection. So projection to do things like spherical, cylindrical, or UV projection, and then transform to adjust those projections uh, on the surface. And then, of course, we have different types of emission, medium for creating things like uh, volumetric renderings or uh, subsurface scattering. Uh, and then we also have the displacement node, which allows you to displace geometry using a, a texture. So these are the main nodes that you'll be using when working with shading. Again, don't worry about the Maya nodes. Everything you need to worry about is right here. So in the next video, we'll take a closer look at the diffuse material and see how the settings work and what different types of effects we can achieve with that material.